Hey, Steven here from crambetter.com. If you want to follow along with the examples I'm going to do in this video, you might want to download the study guide that's linked in the video description. It's free to print or use on your tablet. Electric field's one of those things most people scratch their heads when they first hear about, but I'm going to make it make sense for you in terms of something you already know. So let's talk about gravity for a second. Here's the Earth, all right? We know that around the Earth, there's a gravitational field pointing inward in all directions. And if you've never heard that terminology used before, here's what I mean. I mean that little g on the surface of the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. You remember that one for sure. That's called the gravitational field of the Earth. And meters per second squared actually has a different way of being written too. It's called newtons per kilogram. You don't see it written that way too often, but that's the same exact units. So what does that mean? What it means is if you take a smaller mass, like let's say you stand on the surface of the Earth, here's that little mass M right there, you're going to feel a gravitational force as a result of this gravitational field, okay? So you're gonna feel a force downward, F sub G equal to what? Your mass times little g, that gravitational field. So bottom line here is, when you take a mass and you place it into a gravitational field, you get a gravitational force equal to the mass times that field. Okay, and think about it. If you multiply a mass in kilograms by a number in newtons per kilogram, you end up getting newtons. You get that force, that weight. Okay, well, guess what? These are going to look really similar when we scroll down here. Take a look at electric field. With electric field, here's a charge. And just for the purposes of this conversation, let's say it's a negative charge. Okay, if there's a negative charge here, that means that there's an electric field pointing inward in all directions toward that charge. It creates that electric field. Now, if I take another charge, let's say I take a small positive charge and I place it right on top of this negative charge here. Well, what's gonna happen? We already know positive charges are attracted to negative charges. So it's gonna feel a force, an electrostatic force. And if you had to take a guess at what that force would be equal to, Let's think it through. The electric field is measured in units of newtons per coulomb. So for each coulomb of charge you stick in this field, you get a certain number of newtons of force. So what do you have to do here? You have to multiply the charge Q by the electric field strength to get that force, okay? So the electric field itself is given by this formula here, which very much resembles the gravity formula for the Earth, if you remember that one. And the force that a charge feels when it's placed in that electric field is given by this formula right here. It's exactly like gravity, not too much different about it, except one really important exception. So let's go over that one on the next page here. Mass for gravity only comes in one flavor, right? It's all positive mass. Electric, for, uh, electric charge can be positive or negative. So the field differs a little bit. The electric field produced by a negative charge points inward just like a gravitational field. So here's a negative charge, it's electric field. We already know it's gonna point inward in all directions, just like that, there's your E. But what about a positive charge? The electric field of a positive charge points outward. It's exactly opposite. So the electric field of a positive charge would look like this in all directions. So that would be the E. That's the main difference between gravity and electric field. Okay. Uh, let's go over the formula for calculating the strength of this electric field that comes from a charge in the first place. So here it is right here. It's K Coulomb's constant times the absolute value of the charge itself divided by the distance from the charge to wherever you're measuring its field squared. Okay. And that charge is absolute valued. So whatever you get out of this formula is going to come out positive no matter what. It's just a magnitude. It's up to you to look at your picture and determine the direction based on whether it's a positive or a negative charge. So let's try a pretty easy problem. This one is a problem, not an example. It means I want you to pause the video. Just try this one on your own. It's a pretty easy plug and chug. Hit the play button when you're ready to see that solution and move on to the harder ones. Hey, before we go further, I just wanted to mention that what you're watching right now is a topic review from crambetter.com. If you go to our website, you'll find more of these, plus study guides and sets of practice exam questions for every topic in your course. Make sure you check it out. But now, let's get back to it. 
Okay, so the electric field strength, 50 centimeters from a small lone sphere, is 200 newtons per coulomb. So this is our R value, it's how far we're going from our charged object, 0 0.5 meters in standard units. And then this is our electric field strength in newtons per coulomb. It points toward the sphere. So if it's toward, we already know the sphere is negative, just conceptually. But we want to calculate the actual net charge on that sphere, so we're trying to figure out what is Q. Oh, let's use our formula here. The electric field created by that charge Q should be equal to K, absolute value of Q, divided by R squared. We're going to rearrange that, get Q by itself. Still got some absolute value signs here. It's going to be R squared E divided by Coulomb's constant. Plug that in our calculator, we get 5.6 times 10 to the negative 9 Coulomb. However, we said that that charge must be negative because the electric field is coming toward it, inward toward it. So we know that the actual value of Q is negative 5.6 times 10 to the negative ninth Coulomb. I wish they were all this easy, but electric field is a vector, which means you might have to do some hideous vector algebra. And this next problem here, you never love to see a coordinate axis supplied to you on a problem, all right? That's not a good sign. So let's do this one together, all right? So here's an example. We got a plus six Coulomb charge located at two comma three. I'm just gonna draw that straight on my picture. One, two, one, two, three. It's gonna be right here. There's my positive charge. Uh, okay, so that's, I'm gonna label that charge number one. So that'll be Q1. Second charge, let's go ahead and call it Q2. Negative eight coulombs located at negative one comma one. So there's my negative charge right there. Let's call it number two. And we wanna calculate the magnitude and direction of the net electric field at two comma two. So one, two comma one, two, this point right here. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, yeah, but is that a positive charge or is it a negative charge? It's neither one. This is just an empty point in space. There's nothing here and it's receiving electric field from both of these charges. We're gonna add up the total electric field of both combined at that location and figure out what is that net electric field strength at this empty point in space. Okay, cool, so to do that, we gotta draw those electric fields on our coordinate axis really quick. So this first one's a positive charge. It emanates a field outward in all directions. Outward below it would be straight down. So that is the electric field from charge number one. What about charge two? It's negative, so it emanates an electric field inward pointing. Inward toward it from this point would look something like that. That's gonna be E sub two. E two, unfortunately, is diagonal, so we're gonna have to break it into X and Y components before we can do any vector algebra. All right, so E two is gonna have a Y component here. That's E two Y. It's gonna have an X component here, E two X. And then there's going to be some kind of angle in here. I might as well label it theta. Don't know what that is, but we can probably figure it out really quick. Let's go do theta equals arc tangent or inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, right? Toa for tangent. The opposite side from that angle is one to three meters. The adjacent is one meter. So that's arc tangent of three over one. Turns out to be 71.56 degrees if you have your calculator in degree mode. So that's that unknown angle. Now that we have that, we're trying to figure out the net electric field at this point. Let's do some vector addition. Let's break it down. Let's do first uh, the x direction. So total electric field in the x direction. I only see one thing. It's E2 in the x direction. So where does E2 come from? It comes from charge number two. So let's use that electric field formula. It's K times absolute value of Q2 divided by the distance between two and the point where we're measuring this uh, electric field. Oh, we got to do some Pythagorean theorem there. We got three and a one. So it's going to be what? Square root of three meters squared plus one meter squared. And then that entire R is squared, which ultimately is going to delete that square root sign. Uh, okay, the other thing I want you to realize is look at your picture. E2 in the x direction is pointing to the left. That should be negative. Because of the absolute value, this is going to come out positive. We have to tack on that negative sign manually. The other thing is, this right here is the entire electric field from charge number two. We want to just pull out the x component. So that's the opposite side of our angle theta. So it's going to be times the sine of theta. If we punch all that into our calculator carefully, we get E sub x is equal to negative 6.82 times 10 to the ninth newtons per coulomb. So that's our electric field in the x direction. 
What about the Y direction? Got to figure that one out too. And it's a little bit nastier. So here we go. Total electric field in the Y direction is equal to, uh, let's start with the easy one. Okay, E1 is all in the Y direction. It comes from charge number one. It's going to be negative because it's downward. K times absolute value of Q1 divided by the distance from Q1 to our location where we're measuring the field. That's one meter. And that gets squared. Uh, and then the next electric field in the y direction is E2, but only the y component. It's also negative. So negative k, absolute value of q2, divided by, how far is that? Got to do that ugly Pythagorean theorem thing again. It's the exact same thing we did before. It's square root of 3 meters squared plus 1 meter squared. And that is all squared in the formula. And this time we're pulling out the y component, which is the adjacent side to our angle. So adjacent, we're going to use cosine cosine of theta. Ready to plug this all into our calculator. The total electric field in that y direction comes out to negative 5.62 times 10 to the 10th newtons per coulomb. So now we have the x component, we have the y component, we can figure out using Pythagorean theorem, the total net electric field, it's going to be square root of total field in the x squared plus total field in the y squared. Plug it into our calculator really quick. We get 5.7 times 10 to the 10th newtons per coulomb as the overall magnitude of the field strength at that black dot on our coordinate plane. We're still not done. We have to find out the direction of this field. Um, so let's draw a little vector triangle here. We got a negative electric field in the x direction. We got a negative electric field in the y direction creating a vector triangle here with our total electric field overall. Okay, so there's our vector triangle. We wanna figure out the direction of it. So let's figure out this angle here. I would call it theta, but we already used theta. So I'm gonna call it phi just to have a different variable here. Let's figure out that direction. Phi is equal to arc tangent of absolute value opposite over adjacent. That's gonna be absolute value of total electric field in the Y over total electric field in the X. It's gonna come out to 83 degrees. And if we take a look at our picture, if I point my finger to the west and I go 83 degrees south of there, we hit our vector, so it's south of west, or you could say below the horizontal or below the negative x-axis by 83 degrees. Those all mean the same thing, okay? So that's how to figure out the net electric field at some point in space. But hey, what would happen if you took a charge and placed it at that location? It would feel a force, right? So let's talk a little bit more about that. What happens when you take a charge and place it into one of these electric fields, creating an electric force? Well, positive charges are going to feel an electric force that follows the surrounding electric field. So here's what I mean by that. Here's a positive charge. First question, what electric field does that positive charge create all around it? Well, it's positive, so it has an electric field that goes outward in all directions just like this okay so that's its electric field e right there well if we take another positive charge put it in that existing electric field what direction will it get pushed by that electric field well we already know a positive charge is supposed to repel another positive charge so it should go to the right and guess what that's consistent with electric field as well the other explanation is electric forces follow electric fields for positive charges so the electric force on this thing will follow that electric field and point in that direction all right what about for a negative charge well let's say we have that same positive charge emanating an electric field outward in all directions okay and we take a negative charge and stick it in that field negative charges always oppose the surrounding electric field so the negative charge is going to feel a force opposing that electric field and that's consistent with what we already know right negative charge is supposed to be attracted to a positive charge so this all works out it's all self-consistent okay so if you want the magnitude of that force you can get it by doing coulomb's law or you can get it by just multiplying the absolute value of the charge that you stick in the field by the magnitude of the electric field strength at that location pretty easy formula honestly okay doesn't give you a direction just a magnitude there's absolute value here so you got to look at your picture and decide the direction based on the concepts that you know so let's try one really quick it's not going to be too bad we have an electron in outer space 
placed in a 30 newton per coulomb electric field so that's e and it's pointing in the plus x direction i'm going to calculate its acceleration vector a all right key word here all right it doesn't look like they gave us too much information but really they did anytime they tell you electron or proton man they're giving you a ton of information we know that the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms and we know that the charge of an electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulomb so now we have tons of information about this problem just by realizing we already know some stuff about an electron let's draw a quick picture okay the electric field points in the plus x direction so there's some electric field just hanging out here so that's e and we're going to take our negative charge stick it in that electric field what happens when you place any charge in a field it feels an electric force. What direction? Well, if it's a negative charge, that force will oppose the field. So the force is guaranteed to be in the negative x direction. Force electric. Let's go ahead and calculate that force. Um, so the total force in the x direction would be minus, right? Because it's going to the left, Fe. And the total force should be equal to, by Newton's second law, m times a in the x direction. All right, well, that force is equal to, according to our formula, absolute value of Q times the electric field itself. So that equals MA. And now that's going to allow us to compute the acceleration, which is what we're actually looking for in this problem. So let's rearrange this for acceleration in the X direction. It's going to be negative absolute value of charge of an electron times the electric field strength we put it in divided by mass of an electron. Plug it in our calculator, we get negative 5.3 times 10 to the 12th meters per second squared. That seems like a crazy high number, but remember it's a subatomic particle. They can accelerate really fast because they're so light. And the acceleration vector itself, if we put it in vector format, this is the X component, negative 5.3 times 10 to the 12th. The Y component is nothing. I don't see any forces pushing this thing in the Y direction. So zero for the Y component measured in meters per second squared. And there's your acceleration vector. So now you know electric charges create electric fields all around them. And if you take another charge and stick it in one of those electric fields, that charge will feel a force. If you want to pass your classes the easy way, head to crambetter.com. We've got study guides, practice exam questions, and shorter, easier explanations of every topic in your class. Click the link in the video description, and I'll see you there.